hello. Hello, Artist Academy. This is Art Talk Tuesday number 15, number 16, 17. I don't know. I've officially lost track, which is kind of cool, right? Oh, there we go. Oh, what? They just got a notification that my phone wanted to die, so hopefully it doesn't. Let me see. Actually, I'm just going to plug it in really quick. I'm just gonna plug my phone in really quick. Here we go. There we go. Ah. Okay, so we have Dion in our Art Talk Tuesday this week. So Dion is, so she is basically, um, she was my inspiration for starting this. Hi, Dion. Let's see. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, just hop right on here. We usually just get started with the guests. You, you are the main focus. But I wanted to bring Dion on here because about right around Christmas, I messaged her and I was like, hey, because I saw she was doing courses and like teaching, painting and teaching business stuff. And I was like, hey, like, is it worth it? Like, I was thinking about doing it. Like, do you like it at all? Like, is it worth, is it worth my time? And she was like, yes, I love it. I have, I have this membership group. I have my courses and all this. And I was like, wait, 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 you have a membership group? And I was hooked. I was like, this is something that I want to do. And I knew immediately, I was like, this is going to be what my 2019 is like. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Thomas early. Yeah. So we are doing at seven o'clock because Dion has her own group. And she goes live every night at 8 at 8 p.m. So um, my group is basically modeled after her group. And the same times worked out pretty well. So she has to go live on her group at 8. So I was like, no problem. I can bump mine up to 7. No problem. So, yeah, let's see. Um, Dion, let's see. Okay, great. She's going to grab her ear pods really quick, her, her air pods. And she's going to be on real quick. So a couple updates in the group. So I just made this webinar style video. It's like a 50 minute long video that I've been working on for a couple months. And I'm about to post it probably right after I post this. And it's basically, it just goes through like a, just an overall, like how to kind of get started and how to not make a lot of mistakes that a lot of artists make in the beginning. And I just run through, it's just like a big overall training. And what that is, it goes through like 40 minutes of solid training for you guys. And then at the end, I tell you about the membership group because we're gonna be, I'm gonna be doing like a big membership group drive um, August 1st. And then I'll, after, after August 1st, I'm not gonna be opening it at all until 2020. So I made this webinar to tell you guys all about it, which I will post after this. And then we're going to do a big drive for the membership group. Um, we have 25 people in there right now. I'm hoping to get, I don't know, I think I'll let maybe another 25 in. Um, slow growth, nothing big. And then I'm just going to close it until 2020. So if you guys want to know more about the membership group, let me know. Um, if not, watch, or if so, watch the webinar that I'm about to put up. But yeah, we're going to get Dion on here and talk about all about her. So she has a really cool niche furniture painting like how cool and so she has a group of members of almost 500 paid members in her furniture painting group and she's been doing it for two years and i think it's amazing <laughs> so there are 500 women and some men i think um who paint furniture like how much of a niche is that like how, how many people do you know that paint furniture i thought that was so cool and i think that just kind of goes to show you that you can literally make money with art with anything <laughs> like and it's so cool if you guys haven't checked out her furniture paintings you should definitely check out her facebook or her instagram or youtube she is killing it on all three of those so dion woods i'll put actually she's probably just going to be tagged in this but i'll put a link to her instagram yeah i'll just put a link to her instagram in the comments in a second so yeah that's basically all the new stuff what have you guys been up to? Let, let me know what you guys have been up to in the comments. Thomas, Charlie, I see you guys are on there. Okay. We've got Dion coming on. Here we go. It says adding. It is connecting. Oh, my cat likes to do. Hello. Hey. Can you hear me? It is. 
froze. Sometimes it like freezes. There we go. I think we got it now. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Can you see me okay? Yeah, kind of. You're um. So it's like the voice and the um the the voice or the sound and the photo is off just a little bit. Sometimes it does that, and I'm not sure why. Do you know why? It's so strange. No. Okay. Um, it was totally different for me this time. I guess because you're bringing me on. Uh huh. What is that beside you? It's a cat. <laughs> Look, I can only, it's, oh my goodness. Oh, it's, she, she loves attention. Okay. She's huge, or she looks huge from here compared to you because you're so tiny. Yeah. She, everybody, you know, it's funny because everybody says that. They're like, I expected her to be bigger when they meet her in person. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes. So I've never been like my AirPods. I apologize. I was here before you were, but my AirPods were not working. And so I was listening to you and couldn't hear. So I apologize for being late. That's not like me. As you know, I'm not like that. <laughs> yeah, I do know. You're always on your game, which is so awesome. Like you're, I was just saying that your, your membership group is like my inspiration for my, my membership group. Basically you, you have the best group of women in there. I Thank swear. You. Anytime anybody posts something, any kind of art, basically everybody gives just such positive feedback. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like, yeah, it's amazing. It's it's almost like there's this instant support group, which yes. I I for one did not expect that. I thought we were just gonna paint from time to time, <laughs> um, but you know we're going on two years in August. And Andrea, it's I mean you're in there, so you know it's more like a it's more like a community that you can kind of come in and go out of as needed. But just know that everybody's still there for you. So it's just, it's way more than I ever imagined it was going to be and so much better. Yes, definitely. I, I go, so you started it as just like a, like a learn to paint kind of a thing? Well, I, um, I've been painting um, on furniture for about nine years. Okay. And as my style started to pick up and grow and kind of, I kind of stepped away from, you know, mainstream and took on more of the boho design that just spoke to my heart. Um, people kept asking me, can you, how'd you do that? Can you show me? Can you know, you know what it's like, they want to yeah. know how. And at the time I remember thinking, oh, I can't tell them how I do this. It's crazy up in here. Like <laughs> they'll, they'll know, they'll find out that I don't exactly know. I just, it's art to me. It's, I play, I blend eight colors. I do all these different things that nobody else was doing on furniture before. Um, most of the people that I was following and admiring were using a milk paint on furniture, which is a great product, but it's one or two colors and that's it. And that just, that wasn't me. You know what I mean? Not on furniture. And so as I started to grow and I gained a little bit more confidence. I started doing Facebook Lives. And that right there, Andrea, is what really motivated me and actually sent my business into another aspect that I never dreamed imaginable. Because I could do a little tutorial and then I could film myself. And I started selling the tutorials on my website or on Etsy, actually. Um, and that just kind of opened up a whole new world. Yeah. Um, I was just reading a comment there. Oh, I think that's just for commenting on our lag. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think it's fixed, Thomas. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, Thomas is one of the more active people in the group. He's always on here <laughs> saying hey. That's awesome. Yeah. You've got to have those right there that are always there, and you know you can always show up because – when I'm talking and someone will ask me something and I can't, I skip their question because I can't get to them. There's always somebody in the group that knows the answer can answer for me. And I'm like, thank you. I love that's, that you're here all the time and helping me. Yep. That's Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So you started out. So how did, uh, how long have you been painting? Have you, did you start with furniture? Did you start with canvas? Like, tell I us did start with story. furniture. Okay. I did start with furniture. I tried canvas when I turned 30. That was something like a treat to myself. Um, so when I turned 30, I went and I bought like an easel and it was just like, ever since I was a little girl, that's what I wanted to do. I scoured arts festivals, and but I never had those type of tools growing up. Like we didn't have, um, hi Tammy, good to see you over here, girl. Um, <laughs> I didn't have those kind of tools. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't have supplies, anything like that. 
So my mom was more into home decorating and sewing and things like that, but not art of a creative side rather than just like paint the walls. Um, so I'm a, I have a, two sons. I have a 17 year old, almost 18 year old, and I have a 14 year old. So when those little guys were born, I knew I wanted to stay home part time. And I went through a ton of different like multi-marketing. Um, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Well, I went into retail and I worked part time for my friend and, um, she let me work like three days a week. And then my sister-in-laws, we would rotate. So in the process of that, I turned 30. I try to paint. I think I'm going to do this. I've always wanted to. Well, that is so wrong because what I put out was embarrassing. It was terrible. And a one-year-old kept putting his fingers in all my paints. So I just packed everything up, put it in the attic for about seven more years. And then, then it was almost like forcing my hand at figuring out what I could do to stay home with the with the boys and I opened an Etsy shop in 2010 and that's really what catapulted me into where I am right now is the um the online business coach for creatives and I've never had a booth I have never been in a store it's more like um well I've just only done online so I've really had to figure out social media because it's been my very best friend for my business yeah, definitely. You're kicking butt. So I I figured out Instagram, but I have yet to figure out like Facebook and YouTube, but you've got it. Do you have any tips? You know for... what? Um, thank you for saying that. Yeah. But I started I started um in my Etsy shop in 2010, but I didn't get on Facebook until 12 until 12 because I was kind of one of those last people um that are 40 and older, shall I say, um to fig to to get on Facebook. My husband and I were anti-social media that we didn't really care about. I didn't want to do it. Um, but I realized for my business and, you know, the level, the customer base was on Facebook. That's where I needed to be. There was no such thing as Instagram. Pinterest has just, you know, was bare. It was just a baby. Um, and YouTube was just a baby. So I knew I had to get on Facebook and really had to work that. And then Facebook Live coming into play really was a game changer for so many businesses and online stay-at-home mom and dads. Um, so that it was another thing that really launched me into having a front door policy with you. Yeah. Now you hear my voice. Now you, you see my tendencies. Now you hear a little bit about my kids. You see them walk by. Um, you get to see a little bit of my spaces and what I do. And so that was really like what a brick and mortar would give me was that little dot on my phone that said, welcome. This is what I'm all about. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So, so you would just go, uh, you're inspiring me to do it on my page. So like I've, I've been going lives in the groups and that's in my head. I was like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going live. That's the thing. I was like, wait, I haven't really been doing it outside of the group. It literally just dawned on me. <laughs> so, so you, you are always doing murals. Like it would be extremely beneficial. And I mean, if you, if you came on live in the middle of the afternoon and you were working on your mural and you just set up your tripod for just a few minutes, I'm so like this, what are you <laughs> yeah. doing? Oh my God. I mean, I would be all over that. Like I don't see anybody else doing that and you, you should do that. And then you can go live on YouTube oh, girl. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, is that, is that new on YouTube? Like, it's been six months at least, but I okay. do Instagram, I do Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube all at once. How do you do that? Wait, like iPad, uh, iPhone, or well, I have teenager son, old phones, uh. hand me your old phone. And so when you're on <laughs> now, when you have Wi-Fi, I don't, I don't have to do anything. Like when I'm home, they all, they all work. Yeah. Does that make sense? It kind of try it. Okay, so three, but you have to have three, three devices. Phones, three, okay. Or you All can right. do computer and lap. You can do computer and iPad. I just, I don't have an iPad. I've never had one. And then my computer, because I want all of the little screens together, the cameras. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to like prop up my, my Mac on anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I have three tripods right here in this little ring lot. Yeah. But the YouTube live is something that you could definitely finish for all of the artists. Doing YouTube live is so beneficial for you guys. I'll have a hundred people on there just watching. And most of them are pretty nice. Mostly. <laughs> most of them. Yeah. Okay. Mostly. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow. Heck, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll just do it tomorrow. 
Okay. I'm gonna check on you tomorrow. I will. I will. Because like, if I if I like if I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Like, I'll I Here's won't why. do it. Okay. Here's why. It's that whole think smarter, not harder thing. Yeah. Like, if you can reach three times the amount of people during that 20 minute window. Yeah. There's no reason not to do it. I mean, you're going to push play anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's new for me. I've just been doing it for a couple of months. Um, but all three social media sites are growing because of it. Huh? Just going live. Huh? Okay. Um, do you have any tips for people going live? So you, you go live a lot in your group and I think every day, awesome. <laughs> every day, every day in your group, not every day in my group, but I go live every day, whether it oh, be wow. on my main page or in my group or with someone else like this. Um, yeah. So I have three lives today. I went live earlier. I have one with you and I have one right afterwards, but I also oh, wow. was on YouTube and, and Instagram. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I usually just focus on my Instagram story. Like that's the thing that gets the most attention. Do you think yeah. the, li the live would be better than the Instagram story? No, I don't think it would be better. I think it would okay. be a nice addition to. Okay. I think that your Instagram story is right where you need to be. So if you're doing IG stories and IG TV, I think mm -hmm. all of those, especially for artists, is definitely something you could capitalize on. Keep it, it, It's worth it. But I do think that going live um, on multi for mo you know, on, and the reason I say that I follow a couple of people who are marketing gurus just, and I follow them just to see what they're doing. And Andrea, that's what they're doing. They're doing Facebook live. Um, excuse me. They're doing YouTube. I can't speak mm -hmm. Instagram lives. Instagram. So if they're doing it, there has to be a reason why they are finding it important. Right. I mean, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Right. And so I'm just like, like you said, you're modeling me on this group that you're doing. Yeah. Because I'm so I'm kind of modeling them what they're doing. Yeah. Because what you know, what, what you're doing is what you're doing is working what they're doing is working. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Good. I'm gonna watch and look for you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I usually have like a, a bunch of questions that I ask um, every artist. Let's sure. see. What is your, so what is your typical work day? Like how many hours do you physically spend painting and how many hours do you spend doing other things? So that's changed over the last two years since this group has started. Okay. T so tell me about I, that too, because my group is like small right now um, and it's mm -hmm. going to grow. So I'm, I'm really curious about this. <laughs> so um, the time that I used to spend now I have two littles and you don't have any, right? I had I, two littles. Little what, ones. Kids? Oh, no, I have a cat. Yes. That's it. <laughs> you have a cat. That's it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So when <laughs> I started my business, they were still really high maintenance. You know what I mean? Like they were still needing me. So everything's changed in the, A, the last two years because my oldest drives so that changed everything for me. And yes. two, um, with the group, the group is what I spend more time on than I do painting, actual physical painting, okay? okay? So I've tried to get to where I'm working smarter. So when I am painting, not on canvas, um, because I don't ever, I very rarely do lives on that. But when I am working on my furniture, I actually either am trying to also recreate a tutorial, I'm sharing it with my group, I'm doing a live to generate more activity, right? So I'm trying to do, not only paint a piece of furniture that I'm gonna sell, but I'm also focusing on my social media. So the group takes up more time than I get to spend on painting. So I, it's probably a, like a 60, 40 split. 60% mm -hmm. of my days are on the group and social media and then 40% actually painting. But to be honest with you, there are a couple of days that will go by and I haven't painted anything, not yeah. one thing. But I've been so busy. I've been writing emails. Um, there's 500 group people in my in the group now, yeah. um, and I'm planning a retreat for us. And I, I you know, I, I host in person classes. I do online courses and classes. And so, managing all of that will take up more time. And so, but you'll find balance. Like it's doable, Andrea. And it, it's it's almost as if. I do, I try to keep it half and half where it's like, okay, I'm going to take a break from this, get up from my computer and go paint for a couple of hours. Um, but inevitably someone, need, you know, someone wants something or my youngest needs a ride or something, but it's, um, it's, you'll find your new balance for whatever mm -hmm. that is as your, as your group grows mm -hmm. and the satisfaction that you get from helping others <laughs> 
it's so rewarding. And that's where I am. It's, uh, it's extremely rewarding to be able to help another person that's been in my shoes and maybe spare them the grief. Yeah. And so I do encourage, I do encourage artists like yourself and, and, and myself to find some sort of community, like what they're in, they're in your group. And yeah. I think it's a place where they can bounce ideas off each other, ask some things that are so basic that you just never experienced before, because everybody does it differently. Mm -hmm. You do this differently, you do this differently. So it's just such a great place and can be a very safe place. Um, so you don't always feel quite alone. Like when I first got started, it was in me and my garage. <laughs> lonely sweating crying at times and I ship I ship all over the U.S. that was a very hard thing to deal with by yourself yeah I bet yeah shipping because I remember, I remember you you said you shipped a piece of furniture and I commented I was like okay wait wait furniture wait I've, I've shipped like a big canvas and that I thought that was a lot how much so how much does it cost to ship a piece of furniture usually um I have James who I found um through you ship and James has been working for me four and a half years and I found him on UShip, but that's my, he's my go-to guy. Oh. So I will text James. Hey, I've got a piece that needs to go to Massachusetts. It's a wardrobe. It's 74 inches. How much? And he will tell me how much that's going to be. It's going to be anywhere between 350 to 450 and the customer pays for it. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I started shipping my big canvases too. He's delivered three or four paintings for me too. And it's, I have found that that's so much more, less stressful if I yes. let him load it on his trailer yes <laughs> yes yes definitely yes it's just like yeah t just like handing off stuff that you don't need to do like you need to paint and you need to be the face of your group and everything but everything else is like you're right okay. yeah yeah <laughs> you're right there's someone that can do it probably even better yeah right <laughs> <laughs> which is shipping <laughs> Let's see. So um, could you talk us through your painting processes? Like, is there any methods or techniques that you've used? I know you use DIY paint. You want to talk a little bit about that? So on furniture, for the most part, I use DIY paint. DIY is like a clay based. Um, so this is a product that is, um, it's all natural. It's, um, and the reason I switched from painting with latex on my furniture was because I lost a sale that was like a fifteen to eighteen hundred dollar sale to a lady in California, and she wanted two pieces of furniture. And this was three or four four years ago, and we went through the process. I had shipping set up. I had everything ready to go, and she messaged me. She was, "Wait a minute! Before I pull the trigger on this thing, this is chalk paint, right?" And I said. No, this is a latex from, you know, Benjamin Moore. That was my favorite go-to brick color line. Yeah, and she was like, oh, no, 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 no. I have, um, I have two small children and they're, they're going to be around crawling around this furniture. And I want a product. I just, I can't, I don't want to do any kind of late. And I just thought, what? <laughs> like, I mean, it's devastating when you work so, for, so hard on $1,800 yes. and it was, it was really disappointing. And that was kind of the last kicker to where I was like, okay, I'm going to try this for furniture. It's called chalk paint. This is a clay and chalk based paint. And so it's all natural. It's um, it's called me you know, no VOCs. There's only nine ingredients. So Debbie Beard, she found it, she found it a, um, a recipe that um, she loved. And when she sent it to me, I just fell in love with it and I've been hooked ever since. So I'm a retailer for it because I love it so much. Wow. So wh where is it made? You said. So it's made, I mean, the, the warehouse is yeah. in Arizona. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. It's made, it's made in the USA and um, the clay that's in it. I'll tell you what happens is it's, it's a really porous because just imagine like the clay dirt and um, in Oklahoma, that's what we have. We have like lots of clay dirt. It's really poor, so it absorbs the water and turns into mud. So I blend all of my furniture pieces, right? Like I'm putting five to eight colors on a piece of furniture. So what would happen is I add water, which is my number one thing. You had a question where what was the thing you can't live without when you're painting? Yeah. Water. Water. Spray gun. <laughs> okay. Water. It's my spray bottle. And so yeah. the colors will just magically blend together and create new colors. And just like you do with your own art, but... It's yeah. just a different, it's just a different um, 
you know, medium that I'm in love with for furniture. Yeah. And it creates such a hard base on furniture. It's like, cause it's, it's mud and it's clay and it turned, I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. There's no smell, um, which was important to me too, with working around my, around my family and stuff. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's something I had never really, I, I have no experience with that. I know like I, I knew there was latex acrylic or oils. I know I wasn't really sure that they had, there was like a clay kind of a paint. Huh, that's awesome. I should try that out. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. You answered the thing. You don't like to paint without. Um, and do you have a favorite past project? Do you have a favorite piece that you have done recently or in the past? Um, it's almost as bad as it sounds. I'm like a child. Every piece that I do is my new favorite piece. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, I mean, um, thank you, Tammy. So my, um, my probably to date, my most favorite piece was one of the current ones. It's a, it was a huge wardrobe that was really ornate and I probably had 10 different colors on it and I called it the carousel or the, the carnival wardrobe. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was the biggest piece I'd ever worked on and it, it would just, it was truly like from my heart. Um, but before that, there were multiple pieces that is almost like as a, you experience like a breakthrough or something like in your art where you just almost have to like cry. Like I'm a crier, <laughs> but it's almost like you, you reach, you do something that you've been trying to figure out and you think, oh my goodness, like I've been trying to figure this out for like two years and I figured it out. And so it's almost like breakthrough pieces. I have a couple of those, but um, I've just done so many pieces of furniture and I always say, oh, this is my new favorite. That's awesome. I think, I think a lot of artists can relate to that. <laughs> oh, good. I didn't want to be the freak. Oh, no, no, no. Let's see. Uh, that's awesome. Okay. So have Thank you learned you. any art lessons the hard way? So that, like your, your story about the latex paint is a kind of a hard lesson, but have you like blended oh, things wrong? Have, have you ever had like a furniture piece just go bad? And you're like, I got to start over. <laughs> or do you just so, keep going? Oh, no. Um, there, in the early years, I decided that I would take um, paper and I would apply it to say like, like a decoupage type thing and I would apply it to furniture. Well, mm -hmm. I, my style has always been distressed. Like it's always been heavily worn and distressed. So I learned something early on that... I wasn't sure how I wanted to manipulate the paper, but I put it on the piece of furniture and you're thinking, why would you do that? Um, because no one else was doing it. And it was really critical for me to figure out my own style and something that nobody else was doing. So yeah. I put the, the paper on the drawers and I went to distress it with my electric sander. And when I did that, I sanded holes right through the paper, um, which at the time made me ball, sit down, cry my eyes out. It's June, it's hot and it's a hundred degrees. Um, and then my husband had walked by and came home from work and said, told, gave me a suggestion on what to do. Brilliant. <laughs> um, so what I learned in that was to trust my process. And because I like really worn distressed pieces that look like they're a hundred years old, it was okay to go ahead and move forward with that design sense because that was something that no one else was doing again. And I was scared. I was really scared to be different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, that's so cool though. Just like step out of the box for a second and then just, yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, uh, so I painted Bass Pro quite a bit and they like the distress look quite a bit. And so I'll paint like a brand new like logo or stuff and they'll be like, okay, take the sander to it, make it look old. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so you definitely know the feeling of taking the sander to something you're like, ah, oh, it kind of feels good, but you're kind of like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, my boys would walk by and say, mom, that looks so pretty. What are you doing? And I'd be like, we got to get it dirty and we got to sand it. And they would just be like, that looks terrible, mom. I mean, they just, <laughs> they could not figure it out for the longest time. And then they just, they gave up. <laughs> <laughs> boys, the kids. They gave up asking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, what are your future art plans or goals? Like what's, what's coming up for you? What are you excited about? Larger canvases. Larger canvases. So like, yeah, I did a five, foot, 
I released a five foot piece yesterday and that's just, I mean, you Muriel girl, you're like, that's nothing. Right. But for me, a five foot piece, because my furniture pieces can be six, seven. So I'm used to a large canvas in that aspect. Um, but with artwork, it's a little bit different. I mean, the three by threes I've been managing for a while, but this five foot piece, it was just like, Oh, I love this. We're going to do this some more. And then selling, selling a couple of them. I'm like, okay, okay. We're on to side like this. I like this a lot. Um, so I think in the next year or two, you're going to see a lot more larger artwork from me. Um, and the furniture will just continue and continue yeah. and continue. Cause that, um, that's just where my heart stays too. Oh, good. That's good that you found that niche though. And you still like it after oh, so yeah. many years, there's so many people that get really good at something and then they pivot and you're like, no, like stay, stay in your lane kind of thing. But you very much are, yeah. you still love it. And that's, that's amazing too. I love it. And I also know how important it is at, for the single mom or the, um, the young person who has absolutely $18 to his or her name to grab something off the side of the road and actually do something with it that someone else was throwing away. I believe in recycling. Um, I think it's a really important thing to buy or to, to, to do a used piece as opposed to not always buying new. I mean, I like the mix of them. But man, that single mom that needs new shoes for the kids, like it's so important for me to help those women um, better themselves and better their own lives um, for maybe being in a situation that they didn't plan or didn't predict, or there was violence or there was domestic, there was something going on. Um, so my heart is for those women that, and men, I shouldn't say just say women, men, or I know so many grandparents who are raising their children and I have a lot of mom, grandmothers in the group. So Yay to the, I have 73 year old women who are busting it in my group, yeah. painting furniture and trying to make extra income. So I'm all about it. Go for it. I want to help those ladies. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, your, um, your demographic is mostly like moms kind of a thing mm -hmm. in your group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. They're, they're all so nice too. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll just say that again and again. So you mentioned, um, your large pieces, uh, everybody after this, go look at her recent uh, photo of that. The way you stage it, like your staging is amazing because photos sell, photos sell art and you've got it down. Your photos are so good. And like your, your recent mm. photo with you just like reading a book on the couch, I was like, ah, oh, that's great. Cause usually we're just like standing by it, you know? And I'm like, I didn't even, I wouldn't even thought of that. That's, the, that's amazing. I loved it. Thank you. That just came to me yesterday while I was, I actually, um, yeah, you're super nice too. Heather says, Heather says, we think you're nice too. Sure. Oh. Um, <laughs> Heather. um, I just ran in there and threw on something and, and plopped down and I took the picture myself and I just pushed go and then plopped on the couch and then popped back up. But it's what I try to teach everybody also is that, man, you have to make a scroll stopper. I mean, you got to get them on social media to stop scrolling. Yeah. And so oh, yeah. you can create a beautiful piece of art or furniture, but if they keep going, nobody saw it. Nobody's buying it. So lighting and setting it up. I mean, we literally moved that whole sofa into there just for that photo. Like we moved, I made, we took apart the living room. I made him move the table. I mean, we <laughs> spent an hour setting up for it and um, it's important. Like it's, it's it social media. So if I don't have a store for you to come in and see it, I got to make an impression with you. And you're telling me that it did. And so that makes me really, really happy. <laughs> yes, it does. Like it. And I love hearing now. I love hearing that backstory too. Cause you know, the first thing I thought I was like, so is that's her living room or wait, has she had that couch there forever? Like I would, I just did not think that you moved the couch somewhere. Like it, that's just something you just don't think about. So I'm glad you shared that. And it like almost gives us permission to do that, you know, or gives us an, an, an idea. To Use everything you have. I mean, yeah. that's my dining room. That's our formal dining room. And that's my staging wall. And there's a fake floor. There's five feet of fake linoleum wood floor in front of it. It's sitting on top of our tile. Um, and it's just a 12 foot wall. And people walk in my house and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. it's important. I mean, you gotta, you know, it's all about the first impression and getting them to stop the scroll when they're flipping through the newsfeed. 
That's it. Okay, Ryan. Uh, Ryan just commented. Uh, my my fiance. He was like, I, I need to step up my Instagram husband game. Apparently, because <laughs> he's the one that's always taking photos for me <laughs> if I don't set it on a tripod. Tripod. But ooh, okay. I need a wall now. <laughs> I I have like a studio room, Ryan. We need to make like a wall <laughs> for for staging. Yeah, stuff. you just need a you need a ten twelve foot wall for staging, and then I literally buy three rugs at a time once a year just for staging and it's for staging props. It's our, it's a business write-off or that stool that there's a turquoise velvet sto stool that I bought at home goods. That's just for staging. I don't need that stool anywhere, but I have those things for props for that very reason. And I do do a staging course because people don't understand the importance of it, but they, they like pretty photos. But if you think about it, all of these people on Instagram, they're staging, they're spending all day and they've hired their photographer to come in and take pictures all day long. Yeah. Yeah. You, that, I think that's what a lot of people don't realize about Instagram. Yeah. It's like, it looks no, it, or it looks so like nonchalant or like, they're just hanging out. No, like there's like, there's thought. They got their it. hair did that day and they got the nails done that day. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and they, they took 10 photos that day that they'll spread out in, into the next couple months. And yeah. Oh, that I took a hundred pictures yesterday just to get that. So really the, the ones on the wall of it. And then um, the one of me on the sofa between all of that, I took at least a hundred pictures to get that, those shots that I posted yesterday. That's awesome. I love that you share that too, because I'll, I'll share that sometimes on my Instagram story. I'll send a screenshot of my phone, like my phone um, pho photo library. And it's literally all the same photo different poses and I'm like yep this, yes that's just what it happened and it makes me feel better that there are other people out there doing it too because that's what it Honey, I got 11 I got 11,000 photos and <laughs> yeah. only like three of them are my kids <laughs> you're like you're like I have kids but you want to see my furniture <laughs> right they don't talk back the furniture <laughs> agrees with me so much better <laughs> that's amazing I love that um, so I have one final question here. So most of the um, members of the group are aspiring artists, uh, just mostly just starting out some in their like 20s or some younger. I think one of the groups or one of the members in my advanced group is 17 years old. She's so cute. It's so awesome. Yeah. And so they're just kind of like, I mean, some are moms, but, but like they're just all just kind of figuring out like, where's a good starting point to try to be an artist? Like, like, where, what's your like, good tips of someone who is just, like, starting out? Where's a good place to start? Okay. So, like I mentioned before, I've never sold my merchandise in front of somebody out of space. Or, you know, I mean, I really can't express enough to people how important it is to get your online space and branding set up. I, I feel like even as an artist, like who's just starting, the possibilities are insane. And I feel like it's so much easier now than it was even 10 years ago, 20 years ago, especially. You can reach such a broader audience. And so what we talked about was making sure your photography and your staging and all of that and really continuing your craft like really continuing growing as an artist and trying new things. Um, I think that's probably what I coach more than anything else is to keep, tr keep practicing, like don't get so set in. And then someone the other day, I was on a live on YouTube. She goes, what do you do when you get in a rut? And I said, I stop and I go make a mess. Just stop what you're doing and go make an art mess. Don't care about colors that match. Just literally, and I put my, you know, I finger paint. So I put my hands in the paint and I smear it and let it drip everywhere. And that almost like unclicks my mind as mm -hmm. into stop that of trying to be so perfect over there and let's create. Let's be the five year old kindergartner and just play. And so I recommend that that happen for any new artist that you take a break from the constant learning, the constant training yourself and constant. And then remember who you were when you were five and it didn't matter if you colored outside the lines. I think that's mm -hmm. a really good thing to, to, to remind yourself to do. Yeah. I love that. 
Yeah. I think, yeah, because I think a lot of us are just trying to take ourselves so seriously. We're really trying really hard. And so I love that advice. No, nobody's ever given that advice before. So I think that's awesome. Let's see. Uh, we have a well, it sounds of, like I'm the oldest one here. No, definitely not. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thomas says, yes, build a brand and be flexible. You're spilling the truth, Dion. Is what. Amen. <laughs> and you've inspired Amen. Lissa to get a staging area and the and the studio makeover. So yeah, I think you you've given so many good tips. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I know you're super busy. You're welcome. But just to come you're on. welcome. It's worth it. And I appreciate you so much for even asking me. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate you um, being a part of our group as well. And so I know there's I was. I was looking, you've got like 700 people in here and a lot of the women have, have come and, and want to, you know, support you and be in your group and, and yeah. watch what you're doing. So good for you. And sister, be fearless in your decisions. Like if I had, if I had known what I knew, you know, what I know now at your age, man, just be fearless and be bold and remind yourself, Andrew, I mean, this is me, like, I'm not talking to anybody else here, but I'm telling you. Go ahead and let that light shine. And if it burns too bright, it's their problem. It's not yours. Okay, because yeah. I just think what you're doing and the fact that you're already wanting to help others while you're still building your business and your craft is just such a really sweet treat for everybody else. Thanks. Yeah. It, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, you're right. It is so like, I remember I, I just started this and I was like, I was like, this is a good idea. And then I helped someone and they were like, you, you've changed the course of my year. And I was like, Oh, that hits me like, and then it's just ever since it's like, I'll just get messages like that. And I'm like, you're so right. It's so fulfilling. And yes, it is. Yeah. But yeah and you're doing yes, it is. Thing. Because ultimately, you don't actually have to do it. But at some point, mm -hmm. you may, you may think, like, I feel like it's my responsibility. Like, I feel like it's my responsibility to give back. And um, you may or may not feel that way. Um, but that's what motivates me. It really does. Awesome. That's a good, uh, a good mic drop moment, I think, to, to end this. There's my paintbrush. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again, and I will see you, thank you later. Andrea. Thanks. Have All right, night. girl. Take care. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you.